until it struck. It was very quiet, Saturday morning, um, was not at work with my family. And I, actually, I was playing with my twin boys, literally on the ladder when the earthquake struck. So initially, I thought maybe I had some nausea or something like that. But then the moment I realized that it was earthquake, I wanted to save my boys. So I hold two boys. And I could not really balance myself, so I fell off the ladder, uh, six ladders down, and then two boys were beneath me. I was on them, and the scooter came on top of me. So it was like horrible nightmare because I thought like I saw everything moving, the house moving. Like um, we used to have this simulation in the Disneyland type, you know, like uh, so. And then I ran out because we didn't have safe uh, place to run, so I ran out, and immediately I walked off my house. I saw one of our American staff was literally crying, you know, she was uh, out of her car and we hugged each other, at least we were there to hug each other. And that moment I realized uh, if we can't do anything, we can give comfort to each other. Uh, so that's how it happened and then uh, my boy uh, got really panicked, he was very s scared and he didn't even drink a single drop of water throughout. So then I got the call from embassy to make sure that I'm safe with, along with my family. And I explained how terrified I was and my children too. So then um, the ambassador offered that uh, I come with the, my boys uh, to get shelter in the embassy so that I, I was, I'm at the safe place. And then I came with my boys. Um, I had to make the tough choice because then I had to leave my husband because I had my sick mother who was under oxygen 24 hours. So I made that tough choice to come with my five and a half year old twin boys. I came to the embassy, got the shelter, worked along with getting the shelter and I felt good because um, then I realized that uh, you know I was not there in the field pulling out the people in the collapsed buildings but I was here working to support the government of Nepal through the government of the United States of America and that gave me a great relief you know to understand that I'm getting the shelter I'm working and helping people of Nepal uh, and one thing that I did realize after all those is that unity is a strong bond that keeps us together we will rise again and we will stand with Nepal again and we will rebuild it. All we need is to support each other. Literally in Kathmandu and it was like a swing, you know, like, I mean, uh, my grandmother's father died in the, in the last uh, mega earthquake. So she used to tell us the story and I always used to tell her that, oh my goodness, she adds 25% of it. I used to literally tell her that, you know, that my grandmother adds 25% of the story into what she said. But that day I missed my grandmother and I, I, I realized how wrong I was. It did happen that way, uh, you know, like the trees were moving and in front of you the house were like swinging as if you were, you know, playing with the paper house, you know, like dollhouse kind of thing. It was terrifying, but it gave the strength also to support each other. So we started looking for the people in the neighborhood, and then uh, it was so happy to be involved in the United States government, support to the government of Nepal, and the, for the government of Nepal, and the people of Nepal, people of my country. It was like outside ladder, not very strong, and my house is the not one, the, the pillars one we call it, but it's a wall bear, load bearing wall house, the old one. So. The, the ladder was not very strong, so it was moving. So I could not really balance myself. And with the two twin boys, because I thought I, I have to save them, no matter what happens to me. That's how in, in the process of saving them, I could not balance and I fell off the ladder. I hurt a little bit of injuries, but not much compared to the fact that I'm alive today and talking to you. No, it was the scooter, my scooter that was standing there and it, it, it was also moving, so it came up me. So. You know, I didn't even feel the pain until like I came to the embassy. And when I came to the embassy, I changed the dress and started looking what happened to me. Then I realized I had some wounds. Until then, I was completely in panic state. Uh, but we were trying to track uh, our friends, even the colleagues who were working, who were working together. Uh, one of the boys is a little bit terrified because every time even if somebody pushes him, he feels it's a tremor. But he is better because uh, then we had our house checked by the structural en engineer and he said it's safe to stay there and I explained to him he's scared but he's coping well. But he, he knows now and he drew a very nice picture you know like when we came to the embassy 
In the evening, I told him that draw something that that will tell. And he drew a picture with the electricity pole and with the arrows going to two ends. And I asked him, what is this baby? And he says, mom, this is moving poles. That's what I see. So he knows and the, the broken houses. He has that picture in mind. Both of them have actually. But uh, you know, one is coping very well, but the other one is a little bit terrified. What are your boys' names? They are Shivina and Sayan. Five and a half. Yes, twins. You know, actually for me, I've been telling about this because as uh, I've been working in this embassy for the past six years, we were told about this earthquake. We had several trainings, everything. And every time I used to go back home after this training, I used to put my in-laws, uh, uh, then I used to live with the joint family of 18 people eating in the same kitchen. So I used to have my in-laws surrounding me and tell them that, look, we are on the tectonic plates. Uh, we, we may be hit any time and it will be, you know, like very disastrous. So we need to prepare. And all they used to do is that make fun of me. You know, this lady is just scared for nothing. And I used to tell them that at least have some cash in the bag, go bag, you know, a little thing. I used to tell them and I used to uh, have my, believe me or not, I used to have my carry-on bag always with me on the side of my pillow because, uh, you know, our house is not that structurally good. And they used to make fun of me. So that day in the evening, my mother-in-law called me and said that you were so true. You know, we should have trusted you. But then, you know, like, what could we have done? You know, like, we are not prepared at all, at all. And then uh, now that they realize that it's not the earthquake that kills the people, but it is those structures that we never paid attention to, that attention to is killing the people. And it made me, you know, it took me six years for my in-laws to make it understand. They have understood and actually one of them have already started talking to me. Okay, where shall I go for the soil test? You know, how can I have the you know, earthquake resistant home build, built kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, that's the thing that we were, we knew it, but we were, I don't know, ignorant about it. We, we paid less attention, but we were aware of the fact that it's going to happen. Um, I have actually, uh, uh, my husband's parental houses, it's collapsed in Cabri. Uh, and I think all our in-laws' houses in villages is collapsed um, in the villas. And there were few people that we lost, but, uh, uh, when I talk to them, and again hearing the story, it's the same thing, you know, it's not the earthquake that kills, but it was the structure that killed them. And they were terrified, but then what they are saying is that it's not me only. There are other people also who are having the same pain. So we should cope with each other and we should rise up. Uh, that feeling is there. Uh, so we've been telling this to the politicians also for a long time. I just wonder what would we do without the international support? I mean, because, you know, like, uh, no matter how much we talked about the preparations, we were not prepared much. We were not prepared as much as required. So uh, the international communities are really, for example, the, the search and rescue teams of different countries, including the USA, the Fairfax County team, they took out the people live. And even today, while I'm talking to you, they are distributing relief materials. They are doing all, all those things possible. Uh, from like uh, uh, offering support to maintain the runway of Kathmandu airport to what not. Uh, they're supporting a lot. All they need is that um, how do we, how does the Nepal government really uh, cooperates with them so that they can perform well, you know, like, um, for example, you know, clearing the costumes fast, you know, like, or all these things are there. But uh, I see that uh, the international support, I, we, I think as a Nepali, I must say that we are overwhelmed with the support that international community is giving us to Nepal without any prejudice, without any condition that we are ready to help you. And, and what can we expect, expect more than this? And I've seen with my eyes our ambassador staying at the embassy 24 hours, making contacts with the government of Nepal, government of the United States, you know, willing to help and meeting with the politicians. So uh, it gives the inspiration and I think people are inspired by it. And they will rise, they will have to rise again because uh, uh, whatever happened, happened. Uh, as I always say that, you know, like uh, we are not about rebuilding the houses, not talk, we'll not only talk about rebuilding the houses, we should talk about rebuilding better houses. They can, the houses that can stand the earthquake in the future, the houses that give better future for my boys, the houses that will not scare anybody to look for the for going to other countries you know the options that i'm hearing that people are running to other countries you know like oh we are not safe here but if we can build a safe nepal 
That's what I mean by rising again. Maybe this is the time we, we must, like as a Nepali, I would like to express on behalf of all Nepali people, um, express sincere gratitude to the international community for their uh, support and uh, we'll continue to seek for it. And uh, with your support, we will stand.